Welcome to Conversations with Captain Sandy. And today I have the ultimate, the awesome Kate Chastain. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for showing up for me. I, it, that's what friends are for, right? Exactly. I'm happy to be here. So Kate, I um, have watched you over the years from the beginning of when I got to know you through Below Deck, but not personally, uh, to the time where I met you in Melbourne at your uh, store where you created a charity to help um, local, what was that for? Homeless women and their children. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Um, met your mom and your aunt. And then yeah, my we... mom's still running the store. It's still doing great. Yeah. And who's that in the background that just passed the little kitty cat? Oh, so, um, actually I'm at my friend's condo. She lives like a couple blocks from me because I have my nanny today and, uh, Sullivan was a little gassy, so he was crying a lot. So I came to a more quiet, kid-free area. I love. But that's that. her cat Elaine, and she's another cat, Jerry. Jerry and Elaine. So um, I'm not going to talk about Below Deck because you have moved on in your life and so many different areas. The one thing I want to talk about is motherhood, and I wish Leah was here with me right now because watching, you know, when I Leah and I got together, Lola was 12 years old. And now she's 17. So I've watched the transition and what it's like to be a parent. And from the moment I saw you at BravoCon, uh, you shared that you were pregnant to now watching you on Instagram has been such a joy. So what is it like being a mom? I will admit, and you know, up until this point, especially from what people saw below deck, I was used to being in charge. I was used to knowing what I was doing. I was not used to feeling like the third stews felt like wow, this is a new world for me, but motherhood has brought me to that point. It is so much harder than I expected. Um, but I love it, but wow, it's a lot. So when you had your baby, did you watch that show? Um, uh, what is it? Uh, I sent you the, the name of the show where the women, um, what are they called where they help you have a baby? Oh, like a doula or a midwife. Yes, midwife. Oh. The midwife yeah. show. Did you watch any of that before you had your baby? You know, I There's a show, I don't know what channel it's on, but it was the um, one where the women have the babies for the women. And I was kind of like, that's a great idea. And that show on HBO, I can't think of it right now. Honestly, I'm so tired from my baby. I My brain is out to lunch most days. But um pregnancy was difficult but then having the baby that's scary i hate hospitals in general um i just wanted that to be over with but then when you got the baby home it's a whole new batch of challenges and just when you think okay i think i'm getting the hang of this they grow a week older and everything changes especially at the beginning so i've become like the biggest hypocrite like i always thought oh and i if i ever have a kid i'm gonna be a cool mom i'm not gonna be annoying and show them all the everyone pictures of my baby i'm not gonna be like my having their toys and their you know tv programs in my adult space oh no i'm doing all the things i said i would never do i love that you know when when i was a young captain i always thought if i don't make it in this maritime industry i want to have a baby daycare with puppies so bring your kids and your puppies. And I wanted to have this like, like wrecked ship in the backyard and where the uh -huh. kids could play on the ship and have the puppies. That's what I secretly wanted to do. Well, come on over Sandy. Cause I have everything but the wrecked ship. I have a dog, I have a baby and we could use all hands on deck around there. Yeah. You know, I, I would totally love that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I love kids. The teenager aspects, a little difficult for me because that's when they know everything. And kids are just so grateful. So how old is, and what's your baby's name? Sullivan. He's not old enough to be grateful yet. He's only just started being able to see, recognize my face. He's only 12 weeks old or 11 weeks old. Right. So uh, I can't wait for him to get a little bit older where there is a little, you know, recognition from my hard work, maybe some laughter, maybe a thank you, mama. So we're looking forward to that. Um, but I mean, I don't know about you, but I have a feeling you're very similar to me. I wouldn't wish my teenage self on anybody. I was a bad teenager. Yeah. How about you? 
Yes, definitely. Like I said to Leah, I admire her as a mom. I watch mm-hmm. her shut her daughter's life down like completely and stick to it. And I said, that's one of the things that my parents did uh, for me. When they said something, they meant it. It wasn't like I could negotiate. And, you know, when you're a teenager, you start negotiating. Um, but when I was a baby, I was a good kid, I hear. You know, what about you? Yeah. I think we all were pretty much. I don't know, though, because age three and four, from what I've witnessed, and friends' children that will not be named, and that I've seen some toddlers that start negotiating. Not in my house. You know, that's not going to, I'm not going to let that fly. That's what I say now. But I think I'll be strict. You know, what I noticed is that after, um, well, you, you bought a place, right? You moved mm-hmm. out of the condo because you thought I need a house now, right? Yeah. And Victoria Park, which is really beautiful. It is beautiful. So when did you decide to do that? Like what motivated you? Uh, well, as soon as I was pregnant and I started imagining, okay, you, you know, I, I had nine months to do not much else but prepare. You know, I wasn't going out. I wasn't, you know, so I had those nine months to really decide what I wanted my life as a mother to look like. And so that's kind of when I said, okay, we're going to need a bigger place. We're going to need a bigger boat. And, you know, um, by the time Sullivan arrived, I had gotten all those things in place. Yeah. And and your place looks beautiful. I've never been there, but online, it looks really beautiful. Oh, thank you. You'll have to come visit. Yes. Um, And so your mom, like... Has your mom been a big part of your life, like during this time? Oh, yes. Um, so when Sullivan was born, she came down to Fort Lauderdale and she stayed for three weeks. Aww. And it was such a lovely, special time to have the three generations. And frankly, I'm, I don't think I could have done it without her. Not just, you know, it's difficult having a newborn, but also just another human adult to be like, I'm doing this right. Right. Like there's just, you, there's so much you're learning. And so it was so wonderful. And she's, um, I'm very lucky that I'm very close with my mother. I love that. Like family's important, right? So I'm very close with my family. Sometimes I'm like, okay, a little too much. Stop calling me so much, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah, um, I love that. So for me, it's like watching you become a mom, knowing your history with below deck is such a beautiful growth. Like, it's like you, you're a different human being than you were. The responsibility side that's come out in you is you are an example of what, how people can transform. Not that you were, a, you know, you like to have fun. You know what I mean? And now you put I that. I completely see what you're saying. And I agree. Yeah. But I'll admit, and you're so, you're so um, smart for noticing that because I was having fun and Right before the year before I got pregnant with Sullivan, I bought myself a blue Porsche and I was like, is this a midlife crisis? It could be. And so I was kind of honestly getting bored with my everyday life and I needed another bigger purpose. You know, I pretty much have done, I've done a lot. I've had a very full life, you know, college, yachting, traveled the world, check, check, TV show, check, Um, you know, all the opportunities that come with that wrote a book, started a nonprofit, you know, had a serious show, had a podcast. Like I've kind of done a lot of stuff and I I needed something exciting and new. And I wasn't sure what that was. And the blue Porsche was fun and exciting and new, but only for a little bit. Um, and so when I got pregnant, it just felt like this was the perfect next big change and challenge in my life. First of all, you're still young. Um, Thanks. I don't think it was a midlife crisis. Thanks. You know, uh, do you still have the blue Porsche? When I, when I got pregnant, uh, you know, you have to have a baby in a baby seat and the Porsche had no back seats. God, I love that car. And there was a moment where I was like, well, maybe if I just have the airbags removed, you know, that'll, I can, that'll be safe enough for the baby seat in the front seat of the port. No, I, I know I got so lucky. God loves me so much. So I was going to have to sell the Porsche and get a mom car. Well, you know how there's King Tide in Fort Lauderdale? Yes. Last, last November, right after BravoCon, um, it's a Tuesday night. I'm watching The Crown on Netflix, and I hear some commotion downstairs. And I go to my balcony, and where my condo was was completely flooded from a wild King Tide, like bigger than ever. My Porsche was completely halfway underwater. I remember those photos. Right. Okay. So... It got totaled. I got a check. I bought a mom car. I didn't even have to worry about selling it. 
Yeah. R.I.P. So yeah. that there you go. And now, what are you driving? Um, the typical South Florida mom car, a white Range Rover. Oh yeah, that's typical. Kate. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, for know. South Florida, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, well, for me, like I said, like the transition from who you were to who you are today, like you totally got serious because you're taking this very serious, which I totally love. And you're such an example. And I love how mommy looks on you. Like I said to Leah, we got to get her that barefoot dreams blanket and the little outfit because, um, it's so soft. Does, Mm -hmm. does he like it? Yes. And by the way, thank you for bringing that up. I meant to tell you, but we started so quickly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send you a text of the thank you notes that I have already written. Everybody that came to my baby shower in Florida and sent me presents, I've written the cards, but you know, I've got a newborn. And so it's the finding the addresses and putting the stamps on that I have not gotten around to. So thank you so much. You'll be getting oh my a text gosh, of that. I didn't, I don't need a thank you note. Um, well, I'm not no, a person that actually, writes thank you notes. So don't worry. Like actually, so the, one of the blankets you guys got me and Leah, it's got the little dogs on it. And I put that on his changing table. So I look at that and think of you guys every single day, multiple times a day. Now it does get some poop on it, but (laughs) I'm thinking of you guys with love. Yes. And we love puppies. So I'm glad there's puppies on it. I think I actually said to Leah, we got to get the one with the puppies. Um, Yeah. Anyway, you know, um, again, what's in your future? I know mommy, but what's next for you? So I am um, working on a show that'll be on Bravo soon. Very, very soon. Um, I could probably say it, but I don't want to get in trouble, but it'll be announced very soon. Um, and that's great. It's here in Fort Lauderdale, very convenient. Um, and I'll see you at BravoCon, I'm sure, right? Yes, absolutely. Very excited yeah, about course. that in Vegas. Yeah. And, yes. you know, Adele's Adele's there, so I'm trying to get tickets to that. But oh, yeah, I, you I think we'll be Adele. busy uh, both nights, which is the two nights she's having the concert. It's the same nights of BravoCon. And then she doesn't have a show. I think you can get out one night. I think you can get out one night. Oh, really? Well, I hope so. Uh, in the meantime, I want to say thank you. I don't want to keep you, and I can't wait. I'll be in Fort Lauderdale for the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. I hope you're there. Okay, great. And I would love to meet that beautiful baby boy and see your new place. Yes, you have to come over, so I'll see you then. Okay, thanks, Kate. Yeah, tell Leah I say hi. I will. I miss her right now. She helps me with this. I'm, you know... Um, this isn't easy. Like I know it's not, not when you don't have a wing person. I'm it's rethinking so this whole thing now. It's so hard. It really when I is. had a serious radio show on radio, Andy, it was right at the start of the pandemic. And it was, I was so bad. It was very bad. Like, I hope no one listened to it. Like, I hope it's not available <laughs> anymore. It's really bad. But in my defense, it was the beginning of the pandemic, which was a weird time. I went to a vacation rental with like no furniture because I had been living in New York. They mailed me a suitcase of equipment, like a oh. microphone, a box where I turned on, and that was it. And they're like, okay, you start Monday at 8 a.m. live. So I was just like alone in an empty house. And they're like, and just talk about your everyday life. I'm like, it's it's a pandemic. I just sit in my house. So, and, but that's when I realized this is so hard. Yeah. It is hard. I got to rethink this. You did a great job. You did a really great job. No, I didn't, but thank you. You're awesome. Yeah. You know, and apart from everything, I'm dead serious, like from below deck, because, you know, you, you like to party to what you are today. I'm like, wow, you're Mm -hmm. a beautiful example and you're on TV. That's totally, God is using you. And I believe that you're going to change a lot of lives, especially with women that are pregnant, because obviously during the pandemic, there were a lot of sex going on. There's going to be a lot of babies. There were a lot of pandemic babies. There sure were. But um, yeah, honestly, I think, you know, it was great to have, have something that I loved enough to stop going out and partying as much. I mean, I wasn't crazy, but, right. you know, it was always, it's always good to have something to kind of keep you in check. Yeah. Well, I love you. All right. Thank you. I love you too. Okay. Thank you so much. Ciao, Bella. Nothing's going to hold me.